Okay, so last night was pretty big news from Can-Am, who we all knew were going to have some kind of a competition for the Polaris Turbo R and Pro R Razors, but we didn't quite know exactly what it would be. The Maverick R is pretty special, but before we get into that too much, remember there's a couple other things that are pretty important that came out for 2024 from Can-Am as well. And don't you worry, I'll be talking about the new Maverick R in just a minute, but right now the biggest news in the rec ute and utility lines is the inclusion of the 700 class single cylinder engine in both the Commander and the Defender lineup. So the 52 horsepower 650cc Rotax Ace motor, that's called the 700, found its way into the Commander lineup, and it's in the Commander 4 seat lineup, or the Commander Max. Pretty interesting. You can get it as a DPS or an XT, and it's cool because this is the first full-size four seat side-by-side -side with a full dump box in the industry that has that mid-size power plant, a 650cc single. That's pretty cool. It's very unique. I'm, I'm really interested to get some seat time in this thing and try it out because the reality is it's probably going to be a fairly value-based vehicle. Now saying that in the Commander lineup, they you know aren't the cheapest vehicles going. They're a very high quality vehicle, but now you can get one with a smaller displacement engine. And I think that's really gonna target towards people who aren't looking for a thousand cc's. They just want something that's gonna get the family out, have some fun, and have enough horsepower to do all of that. Secondly, that same 700 class Ace is now also going into the full-size Defender XT as the HD7. And this is another cool offering because I'm sure that this will probably come into the Defender lineup as a bit more of a value-priced XT model. That being said, our world probably does need more value-priced models with the current state of affairs. And with that said, let's throw dollars and cents out the window and look at what is the biggest, the baddest, and the most expensive side-by-sides ever to be built and sold to date. Yeah, this new Maverick R is pretty impressive, boasting 240 horsepower in less than 1,000 cc's. Keep in mind, this is still a 999cc Rotax. It's a variant of what they use in the Spider, they use it in the sea they use it in snowmobiles. But man, to get 240 horse out of sub one liter, that is impressive. So yes, this does have a transmission that should be able to handle all the abuse. The DCT is a seven speed gear on gear transmission that uses a design which almost preps the next gear that you'll be shifting to ahead of the current one in use and spins it up to be ready. It sounds slow, but Can-Am says it's lightning fast and seamless. You can let the system go full auto and shift for you, or you can use paddle shifters to smash through all those gears without the need for a clutch pedal. It sounds like a lot of fun to me. Now, when it comes to the engine, the turbo side of things, to get 240 horsepower, it seems like Can-Am may have borrowed some technology from Skidoo with their two-stroke turbo engine. They're using an electronically regulated wastegate that allows them to control boost, and they have that same thing on the snowmobiles. The drive modes on this vehicle change shift point RPM, and in the Sport Mode Plus, it uses something called ART, or Advanced Response Technology, to help cut down on turbo lag. This ART cuts one cylinder when not on full throttle and delays ignition, maximizing throttle body positioning for the best possible airflow and allowing that third cylinder to come back online when the throttle is pinned and you're looking for all those 240 horses. Do I fully understand that? Nope. But it sure sounds like Rotax did some homework to make this as badass as they could with the least possible lag. It's interesting to note that in Sport Mode and Sport Plus, the Maverick R will shift at 8500 RPM. Now, I'm not one to question reliability too much, but 240 horse out of 999 cc's shifting at 8500 RPM in a 78 inch wide chassis that'll probably be wide open more than anything else? Well, time is going to tell. Now, the chassis is also chock full of cool new technology, something called dual phase tube steel, and it's in a V shape. This is supposed to be way stronger and far more rigid. Now, Can-Am was looking to reduce stress on the bolted portions of the chassis, and supposedly they've done so. The suspension components are now using double bonded bushings to keep things smooth and quiet for the long run. Again, that's something only time is gonna tell. Now, the one big standout, no pun intended, is the insane looking front suspension. The tall knuckle design is said to improve bump absorption, reduce stress on components, and make handling better. It kinda looks like a coat hanger. It allows the front wheels to travel 25 inches and the rear has 26 inches of travel. Now I can tell you one thing, the jury is still very out and from the comments we've seen online, there's lots of folks who even though this vehicle is not designed to be trail or mud ridden, will still want to do those things, but aren't happy that they can't swap in a set of 35 inch mud tires. 
The Maverick R is available in four different models. Now, unlike what Polaris did with the Pro R and Turbo R, offering different engines in different chassis that are different sizes, the Maverick, you get the same engine, you get the same horsepower, you get the same suspension travel, and you get roughly the same vehicle footprint. The only difference really is just a little tire size. The base Maverick comes with Fox 2.5 Podium QS3s all the way around and 30 inch tires on 15 inch rims. Moving up to the X package, you're gonna get the same basic layout, plus the 10.25 inch screen and some cool graphics and specific X package add-ons. Next would be the XRS with 2.5 Podium RC2s with bypass and dual speed compression and rebound adjustments, and an upgrade to 32 inch tenacity tires on the new 16 inch rims. And finally, the premier level is the XRS with smart shocks and it features 2.5 inch podiums up front and 3.0s in the rear, all of them with Fox Live Valve Gen 3, which means dual valve compression and rebound adjustments at up to 200 real suspension adjustments per second. And even user mode changes as quick as two hundredths of a second. Even the flash couldn't outdrive this Maverick. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that I wasn't able to touch on, but we will as soon as we get our Maverick R on the ground here, We'll do a full review and you can ask us all those questions that you've been dying to know. Leave any of those questions that you have down below and when we get it, we will try to answer those as best as we can. You can also let us know what you think of the new 700 series class engine that's available in the Commander and Defender because really, those are real world models that I think more people are going to enjoy than just huge horsepower side-by-sides.